Hello, magandang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. So, ang video po na ito ay para sa mga magtitake ng civil service or ng CESO verbal ability exam. So, ang tuturo ko po sa inyo ay ang technique para sa ating reading comprehensive exam. So, ano nga pa po ba ang definition ng reading comprehensive comprehension exam? Ang reading comprehension daw po ay isang process ng pag-intindi ng text. So, medyo malawak po ang kahulugan nito, pero para po, simple na lang, bibigyan po kayo ng article and then you have to understand kung ano po yung meaning ng text. So, um, may mga tanong po na makita mo talaga yung sagot doon, ang tinatawag po natin ay, it's an explicit question. Andoon na po yung mga tanong. For example, to Tano, quantitative, ilang, how many? So, the questions are already there. Kaya po, makikita nyo po kapag po may mga numbers, and it's asked, ando na po yung sagot. Okay? Pero po, there are a lot of questions that are explicit. Ibig sabihin po yung tanong ay wala doon sa mismo words na ginamit. Example po ng mga tanong na ito ay, Um, what is the tone of the passage? Ano ba yung tono ng passage? So, pag ganun ang tanong, ano po yung tono ng passage? And then, for example, you have choices like admiring. Number two, choice will be depressed. Then, you'll know ang sagot po sa pamagitan ng negative ba yung mga words na ginamit. Kapag uh, negative ang ginamit na words, depressed, low point. I, I'm sorry. If the words that are used are low point um, low, low point or losing hope or sees no light then the answer would be negative also the tone would be depressed and if it's the words that are commonly used in the paragraph are positive like okay, amused engrossed steamed then the tone of the passage might, might be admiring. What do I mean? So, ang mga words po natin are located in the negative realm or the positive realm. May mga words po na pag ginamit mo ay negative. Sabihin po, hindi siya nag evoke ng um, nag evoke siya ng negative feeling, then the words are negative. Like po nga, the word depressed. May mga words naman po na ang paggamit ay nag evoke ng positive feeling. Like the word I see light. Uh, then steamed, valued, amused, amazed, they are evoking positive feeling. Feeling then, ang sagot po ay admiring. Ibig sabihin po, yung mga tono po sa mga choices mo, ang sagot po na, na makakatulong sa'yo para makuha ang sagot ay hahanapin niyo po yung mga mga words na how many ang positive and negative para sumangayon po sa sagot. And then, that's the number one. You have to count how many words are negative and positive para po makuha nyo po yung tone of the passage. What are the other techniques? Yung pong meron po tayong tinatawag na what is the meaning of the author? Meron po tayong mga tinatawag na um, meron po kasi dalawang types ang mini ang pag-understand the meaning ng words. Meron po tayong dictionary's meaning, denotative meaning. Meron din po po tayong connotative meaning. So, yung dictionary, of course, marami pong gamit ang isang word. Like, also, the depressed. Pwede pong depressed siya as a person. Pwede pong, if the area is depressed, ibig sabihin po, mahirap po yung area. So, ang paggamit po ng writer sa word, kahit po kinuha niya sa dictionary, maaari pong maraming gamit. Kahit po, dictionary's meaning. Kaya po, pag may kasi dictionary, mayroon pong number one, number two, number three meaning. So, mag-guess po nyo yung meaning ng word, kahit po siya identitative, sa paggamit nyo po ng writer doon sa sentence. Kaya po, titignan nyo yung paggamit ng writer sa sentence. So, for example po, I, I love color blue. So, yung pong pagkagamit niya ay dictionary's meaning. Pero pag sinabi niya ay feeling blue, sabihin po, um, idiom siya, um, more than what the the literate more than the literal meaning you have to 
analyze that and the meaning would be I am sad. So meron naman po kayo makukuha mga context clues. Ibig sabihin, within the paragraph, andun po yung mga words that can help you. So yung pong pagkakagamit nga niya, yung pong sentences that precedes and that comes after that, makakatulong sa inyo. At higit sa lahat po, yung synonyms ng words. So, within the same sentence po, gagamit po siya ng mga same words para matandaan nyo. For example po, uh, gusto niya sabihin na ang topic niya ay social order. Pwede po siyang magkumamit ng social animal. And then sa susunod na paragraph, pwede niya pong gamitin yung order. So, para po malaman nyo how what will be best summarized is the, the idea of the writer. In the first paragraph, if the right, if the, fir- the first paragraph is about man is a social animal, and then the second paragraph, he talks about order, then the summary, the, the word that best summarizes the article or the sentence that would summarize, best summarize the article would be um, social order. So, so, first paragraph po, social animal, the word social was said, and then the second sentence, order, second topic sentence um, is about order, social and order, then the answer would be in the question, what best summarizes the article would be social order. In other words po, andun din naman po yung sagot sa what best summarizes the paragraph. So, minsan po, para siyang implicit Pero, makikita nyo din naman po doon. Medyo hanap-hanap lang po para masagot ka yung tanong. So, ang usual implicit questions po is, what can you conclude from the paragraph? How, what is the best title for the paragraph? What is, um, what is, what is the idea that the likelier most agree, mostly agree? Or what is the idea that the writer mostly would disagree? So, Malalaman nyo po yung standard writer kung makikita nyo po yung topic sentence kapag short passage. Ibig sabihin po, usually po yung first sentence, yun po yung topic sentence. Minsan naman po ay the last sentence. Okay. Usually is where the location of the topic sentence or the main idea. First sentence and last sentence. Pero meron po, hindi po palagi, may mga paragraph po kasi na explicit po yung topic sentence. Ibig sabihin po, hindi po siya stated. Pero makikita nyo po, din naman po. You can put it in your own words, pero um, yung idea po ay malalaman mo dahil sa tulong ng bawat sentence. So, hanap-hanap lang po para po makita nyo yung tamang sagot. Pag tinanong po kayo, what is the best title? Usually po, a title encompasses the meaning of the sentences and the paragraphs. Isibihin po, kung ano po ang uh, makakapag-encapsulate ng lahat ng uh, makakapag-encapsulate ng idea ng lahat ng paragraphs. Yun po yung title. Dapat po nakapaloob lahat ang sinasabi ng iba-ibang paragraphs. And then, um, ang suggestion ko po ay you have to get to know word history. Um, that's a shortcut to getting to know words better. Saan po ba galing ang mga words na to? At tapos po, yung word history po ang tawag do. Available po yung mga word history sa iba ibang bookstore. And then, uh, ako po yung naging technical knowing word histories. And then, if you can get to know the family po of words, you have what you call as affixes. Paano po kinakabit yung prefix sa isang etymology or root word at saka ano po yung result pag kinap kinaptan nyo po ng suffix. For example po, malalaman nyo na po na noun ang word kapag may shon, administration, establish, o moment, establishment, or kapag kinabitan mo ng ism sa study like Buddhism, Confucianism, Catholicism. Okay? Uh, then it be, it means to say study or logi. It's study. Uh, logos, from the word logos. Ibig sabihin po, uh, the more you know about the affixes, and the etymology of words or the root words, the better for you to understand words po. Kasi po, importante po ang words kasi po, mas maindindan niyo po ang English passages. If you have 
deep immersion with the vocabulary. Kasi nga po, um, pero hindi naman po lahat ng vocabulary eh, malalaman nyo. Sabihin po, sa so dami-dami po ng vocabulary, po kayo mag-alala. You can guess the meaning of the vocabulary via the sentence per se kasi po meron pa tayong tinatawag na contextual clues. Ibig sabihin po, nabibigay po ng clue ang writer. Kung ano ibig sabihin, uh, you'll know that because the writer will be using, for example, to um, illuminate or enlighten you with what's the meaning. And then if he is defining something, he will have an extended definition. He'll give a lot of illustrations, narrations to, high, to emphasize the point. So, ibig sabihin po, uh, marami, marami pong uh, tools na binibigay si writer para mas ma-unlock nyo yung meaning niya. Okay, just in case po na hindi nyo talaga ma-unlock ang meaning, huwag po kayo magfo-focus sa questions na hindi nyo alam. Focus po sa mga questions na alam nyo. Kasi po, um, it's a waste of time to spend your time the bulk of your time with the questions that you don't know. And then, kung meron po kayong mga passages na mas within your comfort zone, like if your comfort zone is in business, and then the question, there's a business passage, focus po kayo. Kung ang pong comfort zone is in the language or article about linguistics, then you focus on the questions about linguistics. So, basa-basa lang po ng science, technology, business, current events, um, discoveries, history, and para po mas mas meron po tayong confidence kapag po confidence kapag po mas mag, mag answer kayo ng comprehension exam um, so um, best technique po is you have to have a positive outlook of reading comprehension exam um, kasi po lahat po ng ating article na binabasa um, E napakaganda po kasi po, it will enlighten you about something. Kapag po ang topic po is about fishing, um, because the writer, or if the writer is a fisherman, because he's an expert in fishing. If the writer is a carpenter, because he's a writer in carpentry. So, um, if the writer is talking about this experience, then you'll be enlightened to know that there is someone that's giving you new ideas and you are share he, someone is sharing a part of himself so ganun po pag po gusto po kasi natin magbasa nag-enjoy lang tayo uh, the more the better for us to comprehend ideas and uh, the more uh, it's easier for you to understand questions pero po ang technique ko po kapag po nagbabasa po ng passage para po mas magaling po ako sumagot Kapag sa mga PhD, kapag po mga IELTS, TSE, TOEFL, civil service, kaya mga iba-ibang examinations po na posible niyong kukunin, ako po, ang ginagawa ko ay skimming first. I skim the idea and then go to the question and then read again. So, uh, para po sa akin mas effective yun kasi po, pag po, bigla akong pumunta sa questions na hindi ko pa po alam yung topic mas nagkakaroon po ako ng dissonance. So, ako po, mas may, consonant, mas may nawawala po yung cognitive dissonance ko kapag po, babasahin ko muna yung article, skim it first, get the major points, and then go to the question, and then read, the, read it fast. So, yung speed reading po had, has helped me a lot kasi po, uh, pag may gumagamit po ako ng kamay, um, my eyes is not fixated to a word or pag dun po sa dulo ng sentence tumitigil. Kaya um, using finger po, we advise is, sa mga kumukuha po ng reading, uh, speed reading technique sa amin before. Uh, we, and then, yung mga tinitrain ko po for the exam, I am telling them to use, it will be helpful if they can use their finger to assist them para po ma-lessen po natin yung fixation. Pero, um, since kayo naman po ang kukuha ng exam, kung hindi mo po, question muna, ayaw gumamit ng kamay, um, may iba naman, skimming muna, then questions, then uh, look for the idea, meron iba naman po, look only for words, scanning, what helps for you, kung ano po mas beneficial for you, then uh, you follow your instinct din po. But nonetheless, um, there are a lot of questions po online. Uh, there are review questions po that you can grab in the different bookstores. 
uh, I would suggest po kung if you can enroll at MSA, napakagaling po ng mga review centers nila at saka mga books, then it will also be helpful for you. And uh, of course, if you opt for other review centers or you do your self-study. Pero para sa akin po, um, review center is really conducive. Um, you can focus and then you'll be more disciplined there because there's a teacher and then you're in front of a room, a condition room, and then um, you're guided. Mas maganda po para sa akin review center kasi nga po, mas um, you must discipline ka. And also, you're the, the camaraderie you'll have with other of your, with your classmates. And there is also um, the excitement to share together with them. And also, ma- may mga tanong na hindi mo talaga alam at nahihirapan ka. So, you need people, you need encouragement, you need assistance. Uh, I believe um, Review Center will be of help. Okay, just in case you have questions, po, leave a comment below and I'll try to answer them. Po. And then um, uh, I'll see you soon. Um, Successo naman po, I uh, hope I can full, make a full bone review. So if you want me to produce, please subscribe to this channel so that you all can encourage, I can be encouraged to produce more. Thank you. May God bless us all. Of course, po, last na lang po. Um, do not forget to pray to God na yung mga questions po nalalabas ay within your comfort zone and also um, mas mag po po tayo ng words review, review and I believe that God will bless those who work hard. See you soon. Thank you. is more on helping you with your reading comprehension exam especially on the reading uh, especially on civil service and test examination and all other exams like IELTS TSE and TOEFL but my examples will be more of the civil service and test examination which is called verbal ability so when you have uh, exam as a reading comprehension it is usually guided with you may have different you can get different tips and techniques rather so when you say reading comprehension it's more of processing text and understanding the text as well but of course you have to understand first that when you when you're reading an article or better yet, a paragraph, you have what we call as the mother, the thesis statement or the mother idea. So, uh, the fir- usually the first paragraph is the introductory paragraph, and they will be followed by the three body paragraphs. And then the fifth paragraph would be usually be the conclusion. But because it's a reading comprehension, usually they'll be taking part of that or a short passage not the full-blown essay so that it will be the one that will be given to you but nonetheless usually the paragraphs even if it's an expert has a mother idea so uh, the in other words uh, the mother idea is very important you have to find that mother idea so that you will understand the text. But just in case uh, that it's an excerpt and the mother idea is not there, you can get it in the sentence per se. What do I mean? So, uh, usually, your guidepost will be the usage of the word. So, for example, when you say word, you have the uh, the denotative meaning and the connotative meaning which means that usually a word can be used in its literal meaning or in its connotative meaning for example the word blue may be used as a color or it can be used if you say I feel blue then it is used 
in its tentative meaning. Um, mean to say that I feel blue means to say that I'm sad. So, uh, the word sometimes is not how it's used in the dictionary, but there are subtexts on the meaning. So, you have to take a look on how the word is used. For example, um, the author used its synecdoche meaning. It represents, part represents the whole. Meaning, uh, for example, if the writer says life is a stage, the stage there is not necessarily a stage wherein people, not the literal meaning of the stage wherein the actors or the actresses the, uh, is there where the podium is located the props are there you see life is a stage means to say like uh, means to say that life is a performance life is how you perform so the writer there use the word stage as a synecdoche means to say that it represents the art represents the whole stage represents the whole uh, so you can take a look at the figures of speech how the writer uses it or the how the other means of using words to represent another meaning but how will you know how it's used you can also you can have clues within the paragraph so you have to take a look at the how it is used in context I mean to say you'll have there a lot of context clues so for example um, the word depressed has a lot of meaning it can be depressed that you're in your low point or the, the area is is a depressed area so um, it means to say that it's a very poor or not economically progressive so um, the the word is uh, very very magical and it has a lot of meaning so you have to familiarize yourself with synonyms antonyms because usually that's a question about the meaning of the word so you'll know how the world the word works in my case I've been uh, in different exams that I've been taking like in the PhD level, I'll be able to gauge the meaning of the word because of the contextual clues and the figures of speech or if the words is used to be politically correct or the oxymorons, more or less, you'll be able to understand the meaning of the word better if you have a deeper understanding of the word. In my case, I have been very engrossed reading word histories. If you know word histories and the family of words, like the affixes also, like informed, information, then you have the misinformed, you have the miss, the dis, interested, and you put the affix, disinterested. You know the miss and this are the opposite of the etymology. It will be easier for you to guess the meaning of the word. Also, if you know the structure is the word like it's a noun, you have the suffix shawn meant ism. Ism means study, so it's easier for you to understand the meaning of the words because of the the history of the word and also the brothers and sisters like alter the word alter I mean to say to alter means to change but if you put their altercation it means to say um, they have different ideas that's why they have altercation so alter altercation they are brothers and sisters it's easier for you to understand uh, how it, you can use the, how the words are used in other words what I'm just trying to say is that the more the more you know about the word history the better it will be for you it will be very helpful also for you so you can grab, grab a copy in different bookstores uh, about word histories and if you can take a look at the synonyms and antonyms of the word it will be helping you a lot like the 
affixes, we just say the prefix, the root word, and the suffixes. It will help you because different words can be used differently in a sentence. Like, um, if you have able, ability, um, disabled, disability. So, uh, just the etymology and the prefix and suffix. You'll know how to be able to understand the word because you cannot, you cannot guess, you cannot have a leakage or have the actual question. You can, uh, the questions or the passages will be usually taken from medical journals, communication journals, okay, the highly educated articles. You can, they also can get that one from newspapers, from pamphlets, from histories, from academic books. So usually, well, they are highly intellectual articles. And you cannot guess where they'll be getting that one from. But you can, what you can do is to understand these um, passages and how the words are used in context so that you'll be able to understand. But usually, um, the questions will be ranging from explicit to implicit. What do I mean when you say explicit? Uh, the questions will be answered. The answers and the questions are already there, like the how many, how many, then the questions like where, where is it the place located, or why, sometimes it's there. Okay, the basic questions of five W's and one is sometimes there. But the, most of the questions will be implicit, meaning the questions are mostly inferences, logical conclusions. So if the question says, for example, what do you think the author will be agreeing with? It, of course, you, it's highly implicit. What would be your logical conclusion? What would be your inferences on that? Okay, how would you best summarize the article? So it's your summary that would help. In those cases, what you're going to do is you have to identify the topic sentence. If it's the mother idea that's there, it's better or the thesis statement. The thesis statement is there. It's easy to understand the summary or the synthesis of the paragraph. Nonetheless, if it's just like a one paragraph and it's a topic sentence, then the answer will be the topic sentence. Where is the topic sentence usually located? Usually the topic sentence is in the first sentence or the last sentence. But if it's an implicit the topic sentence is not there, then you'll know based on the repetition of words also. And uh, the, the sentence that would be encompassing all the other sentences. Mm, in short, the paragraph is a beautiful, beautifully arranged paragraph. And you have to understand the literal meaning, the, or the denotative meaning, or the dictionary's meaning, and also the quantitative meaning. Um, if you could understand the figures of speech as well, that would be great. Um, the dictionary, the, the different meaning and the tones will be helping you out. If they ask, they'll be asking what is the tone of the writer, if, for example, is it admiring or depressed, if the words that are used in the sentence are he is abused, positive, he, he likes, he respects, then most likely the tone would be admiring. That means the words that are that have been used by the writers are highly positive. It is okay, admiring, esteemed. Um, he likes. He has a high respect. So the mostly positive words, then the tone would be admiring. But then if we'll be using negative words like. Okay, at this low point, if he, he, he sees no light, then uh, the word will be depressed. The tone of the writer will be depressed. In other words, um, you can count the words that are negative to know the tone and the words that are positive to know the tone. But 
there are also the your clue also would be that there are different paragraphs, the types of paragraphs. You have the paragraphs that are you know, present a problem and then you write the you solve it. So you call the PS or you have the the cause and the effect or the C type of paragraph. There's a cause and there's an effect. You have also paragraphs that like contrasts or shows the difference or the comparison type of paragraph or contrast, com- compare and contrast paragraphs. Um, there are paragraphs that are expository or informational. There are paragraphs that are highly narrative, narrate a story. There are paragraphs that are descriptive. And the more, in other words, the more you immerse yourself in the different types of paragraphs, the different types of text, the better you will understand. A lot of people is asking, why would it be easier for an English teacher to understand this text or those who are, uh, they are very, they have a passion for reading. Of course, because it's in, within the realm of, it's, it's in your comfort zone. So, uh, the more you read text and practice the weather, the better it will be for you to understand and the better for you to answer with the comments and exams. So the technique is keep on reading and practicing so that you'll, you'll be very much in tune with the styles and the, the different writer's styles and the different the different writer's styles will end so you'll be more comfortable with the reading comprehension, comprehension exam. But I guess the best technique Number one is that you have to have a positive outlook of the text. Um, any writer is as an expert of something, or if he's a carpenter, an expert in carpentry. If he's a fisherman, he's an expert in fishing. So if you have a positive outlook of a paragraph, you'll be able to understand the paragraph more, and you'll have an open mind. That's why. You'll embrace the paragraph and you'll be able to like reading. Um, in that case, when you're taking the exam, it will be easier for you. That's the number one technique. The second technique is that um, you should read the paragraph or focus more on the paragraph that is within your comfort zone. For example, there are paragraphs about business, there are paragraphs about science, there are paragraphs about technology, there are paragraphs about language and the history of words the paragraph about medical technology and invention their paragraph about physics their paragraph about current events so if you're in the conference if you're comfortable in business I would suggest you take the exam first within that paragraph so if there are four questions about that business questions, then it will be easier for you to answer because that is within your comfort zone. So you have to answer first the paragraph that is within your comfort zone. And then if there are a paragraph or a sentence that bothers you, please, please do not waste your time consuming all of your time just to answer one question or two questions. You focus on the questions that is, is within your comfort zone. And just in case uh, there are questions that you can understand, uh, try to use the process of elimination. Eliminate those answers that may not, will not definitely be the answer. And then if you're, if you're left with two, then you can guess by having the contextual clue. In that case, there is a possible, still possible that you'll be able to guess it right. And I believe that the more you love reading, the more that you'll be able to understand that. So read books about business, technology, science, please. Um, read books on medical journals, on Communication journals, linguistic journals, 
a business journal is key. They are very helpful because uh, the your immersion to the language will be very good. Um, read current events, magazines. Uh, that will be of great help. More importantly, of course, you have to pray to God. The questions that will be emerging and the really comprehension of an exam will be in the areas that you have reviewed. And good luck to your exam. If you have questions, you may put it in your comments. And if you can subscribe to my channel so that I can be encouraged to produce more information on reading comprehension, the civil service, and the CESA exam which is my area of expertise. And if you have questions about communication and business, then you can put a comment here and subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and I hope to see you soon. Okay, regarding my CESO review on the management, still owe you one. I'll be producing more on CESO and the different management principles and the concepts. See you soon. Thank you.